edit that out. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is this is the acquia podcast today i'm going to be having a conversation with paul wander from invica invica is the parent company of sensio labs uk talk about the gap between business and it today and what you're doing to address that well it is it's as good or as bad as ever uh, it's it it's not a gap, actually, I, I think, between business and IT, but between human beings and machines. Uh, we don't exactly uh, think about things in the same way. So when somebody's got a, an idea in their head, first of all, even if you're talking one-to-one -one with, with another person and you're saying very simple things, to, to truly connect and have proper understanding of what the other party means is not simple. Um, and obviously people specialize in communication, etc. So I don't see it as a schism uh, really between business and IT, but a schism between human beings when they try and relate to each other. And uh, we've seen the, uh, the methodologies which are wrapped around the delivery of, of IT systems have been evolving quite rapidly. Um, in the early days, I was involved in RAD, uh, Rapid Application Development, back in the early 90s and DSDM and other things like that and today that's all been um, I guess soaked up by the agile manifesto uh, and agile methodologies agile methodologies are key to the delivery of modern software because they promote good communication at the end of the day it all comes down to well specified systems and I don't think that's a business or an IT um, thing to do to have to do the specification it's both or all stakeholders, all parties have to get that definition in, a, in the best way they can in order that the, the clever developers, if you like, can then go off and build and meet the requirement. You, you'd see your, your business mission as facilitating this communication between people to arrive at the best possible technology solutions for business problems? Yes, I would say that's right, and even if I would even temper that slightly by saying the best value as well. We're very value-driven with our customers um, who, who ask us to do that for them. So we are very interested that we're not just developing vanity features, but we're developing value features, uh, and that's something we take seriously. When it comes to, to the prioritization of which things get developed in which order it should be driven by the value the incremental value it can add to a business or cost that it can take out um, unfortunately in many projects that doesn't seem to be the case but we're we're trying to in our small way help um, even some very large organizations get to grips with modern specification and delivery techniques which probably moves on to the world of bdd and behavior driven development Ah, so that's one of your specialties, actually. Could you talk about using BDD to help a customer to success? Yeah, I mean, we, we started piloting BDD on our own internal projects about, uh, I guess, over a year ago now. Uh, it's been around longer than that, and in a, I guess in a prior form it was called TDD. Um, but the T uh, in test-driven development was misunderstood by people and it should have been a test for business fit actually and not for uh, a technical like a unit test so anyway so bdd and the advent of that uh, is, is is very important to the way that we build systems today um, we uh, don't insist but we recommend on all of our projects that we use it uh, and i can point you to a, a a case study a video case study we have of, of an existing client who took an an application that was past its prime, still did the business, still good. So it's quite a large e-commerce application at feelunique.com. Uh, so they're, they're, they're choosing to use BDD to pivot from their old platform to their new platform, which is quite modern thinking, really. So they're taking the old platform, describing it in uh, using the BDD uh, 
language of Gherkin, and then using that as the definition starting point to build the super modern new platform. And component by component, they're then deprecating the old application and bringing new pieces online. And that's really with open source technology, one of the major benefits that people don't often think about is the modularity that it affords you. That you do not have to take a big wall-to-wall -wall, uh, monolithic set of applications to run your business. You can take various bits and pieces, best of breed, off the shelf, try things out, and even within applications, rip and replace components in a much easier way with open source tech. Let's talk for a moment about behavior-driven development and the Gherkin syntax that you use to write the test. Number one, BDD, the, the, the language itself is English, readable, understandable by everybody. Uh, although the correct forming of the correct syntax needs to be done correctly, it's, it's highly readable. So it's not like, you know, nothing like computer programming, which is anathema to business people. Um, the second thing is that when you're constructing your, uh, the, 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 the definition of the system in BDD, everybody, need, everybody needs to be involved, which is really good. So you have the business, the product ownership, the testers, and I'm talking about QA engineers, software engineers and test, uh, the developers, the PMs, the business analysts, everybody involved in this, everybody involved in web development um, can actually participate and, and ought to participate in that definition. What we've helped to do at Feel Unique, for example, is to take individual components to to ask people what they think it does and start to define the, um, the ex at least the external features that are visible uh, in a system. Uh, so if, I don't know, you might have a, a news component that simply takes a feed, which is quite simple, and you then might have a search and filter mechanism, which is a very, very complicated thing to do with the type of people who are looking at it and whether they're allowed to see uh, half of the, the items that are in the catalog it can get very, very difficult quite quickly. So what we do is we take, we, we interview people, we talk to people, we capture requirements, we ask people to add their own acceptance criteria um, to those requirements. Um, and uh, also on top of that, then we look into the code base and we start to see some, dare I say it, maybe some hard coded issues in there that we can pull out and genericize and put into the BDD description. We, once that, that description is good enough, it doesn't have to be complete, but you've got enough uh, definition there. The developers, what do they do? The developer will come along, they will compile this uh, definition, and it will all fail because there is no application to support it. They'll start to put pieces of the application together. I need a registration system, I need to be able to sign in, I want a forgot password thing. Whatever it is, they start to put pieces of the application and as they start to offer up pieces of the application, the, uh, the BDD language itself, the compilation, starts to turn green as pieces are developed. And there's two great benefits here, is that the developer actually develops what the business wants. Great. That's really hard to achieve. And moreover, the developer does not start gold plating features. As soon as something turns green, it means the business requirement has been met. Gold plating is dangerous for two reasons. Number one, it's unbudgeted work. And number two, it's coming out of the mind of a single human being, the developer, who says, oh, wouldn't it be good if I did this particular thing? No, no one else knows about that and wants it, so don't do that. So BDD really, for me, means that the requirement is understood, shared, communicated, and met at the right level. And we're using tools like BHAT, uh, and the project, uh, the guy behind BHAT, uh, Constantine, is uh, working here, and PHP spec uh, for the PHP language um, to, to help uh, developers uh, with the right tools to do their job. Uh, and Drupal 8, uh, uh, the community has adopted uh, the BHAT and some other tooling to help define and describe the requirements that are needed for the Drupal application itself. That's, in a way, another great example of how to pivot from old tech to new tech while, while making sure that you're preserving the, the features that you want to preserve. 
just to round this out, um, I will link to some Gherkin and Behat material in my post around this conversation. Yeah. I was looking at some Gherkin documentation and the tests are formulated, as you said, in a really clear way. From the dawn of uh, modern business computing, uh, I guess in the 60s and beyond, um, people have been looking for a good way to describe requirements and I can tell you it's not easy and there have been a lot of different theories, the pendulum has swung this way, that way. The simple construct that BDD is predicated is given, when, then. And that's really nice. So your given is I am a certain in a certain situation. For example, logged in, or I am an, an administrator of a system, or I'm a, a registered user, a non-registered user. It sets the, the starting conditions. The, so it's given. When is right. Now something happens. I click a button, uh, I try to submit a form or whatever it is. That's the behavior. Um, Sorry, that's the trigger for the behavior. And the then is the outcome that you, you now expect. And um, for every positive inference, so when I click submit, the, my user ID is created, there are at least five negative uh, connotations which a good business analyst would have to work out. And that's really the trick around BDD is, is sorting out the given, when, then, and then all the different cases and edge cases, let's say, of where there may, that may not strictly apply. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Thanks, Jan. All the best. Ah! Jan? for roughly for okay okay i hear you now but uh, tell me but tell me i'm looking at my camera is that is that acceptable <laughs>